Hello people of the internet! Today we're taking a look at the beautiful 400i exploration vessel from Origin Jumpworks. Representing style, quality, and sophistication, the 400i exhibits class-leading range, substantial defensive capabilities, and a factory-equipped scanning array while maintaining the comfort and elegance Origin is known for. The 400i comes in at 60 meters long, 32 meters wide, and 12.5 meters tall. With the size that will please citizens seeking a ship, that sits between the 300 and 600 series respectively. The 400i serves as a technical explorer as its primary role, but includes the luxurious details that comes with all Origin ships. It has comfortable onboard living, the ability to carry 42 SEU of cargo, and even the X1 hover bike for planet side traversal. CIG has stated that the 400i is Origin's competitor to the RSI Constellation series and Drake Corsair providing another option to the well-liked multi-crew explorer range of ships in the game. It's also more agile and faster in a straight line than both the RSI and Drake offerings. While the 400i gets its design heritage from other luxury ships in the Origin line like the 890 Jump and 600i, it is not designed with passenger transport in mind. The life support system is tailored to a maximum crew of three, with a small buffer for safety. It's not meant to be a party or strictly luxury touring ship like its 600i Touring and 890 Jump Big Sisters. In earlier concept designs, the 400i did have a sunroof and pool in the rear, but Chris Roberts asked for it to be removed to maintain the ship's role of a technical explorer that would be just as capable as similar ships but with the luxury take that Origin is known for. Historically, the 400i was a bit of a meme before it came to fruition. For years, the community asked CIG to please give an Origin variant that sat between the 300 and 600 series. It was an almost Goldilocks situation where the 300 series was much too small and the 600 series was much too big for some backers. In late 2020, the 400i showed up in the game files and leaked images began to appear on Reddit, but no one was sure if this was to be the final asset. CIG joined in the fun by teasing the backers with tweets on March of 2021, as well as an April Fool's joke that started with an Inside Star Citizen episode titled A New Vision. The entire show revolved around Origin's new invisible 404 ship with 16 toilets among other tasty memes. The comlink feed entry brought backers to the full 404 page displaying the invisible ship. Finally, the Origin 400i was announced on October 9, 2021 during the Sitcon 2951 event. It was sold for $220 war bond and $250 via store credit. There were also two limited time skins available among the optional skins for purchase. The first being the Meridian, which is a metallic silver color with grey accents. The second being the Penumbra, which is a dark grey with gold and grey accents. This skin was exclusive to concierge members during the 400i concept sale period. The 400i component loadout is somewhat unique amongst other ships in its size and class. It comes stock with size 2 grade B components throughout, but the defensive capabilities of the ship revolve around its size 3 guard shield, which allows it to survive almost any enemy encounter for quite some time. When the 400i was first concepted, it had the largest shield of any ship of this size or role, but the Constellation Aquila now has the same size shielding. That said, the size and maneuverability of the 400i means it's harder to hit so it remains at an advantage. In order to power this shield and keep things cool, the 400i has a unique setup of three power plants and three coolers. Specifically, the 400i relies on three Sedulity power plants as well as three Snowfall coolers. The 400i comes with pilot controlled dual size 4 hardpoints defaulted to the size 3 gimbaled Panther laser repeaters, as well as a selection of 36 missiles. These consist of 16 size 2 strike force and 16 size 1 marksman warheads on bespoke missile racks. Providing defensive firepower are two remote turrets controlled from the bridge, each with dual size 3 Panther laser repeaters. These cover the upper rear and lower 360 degrees. Approaching the front nose of the ship, we find two access panel buttons on the side of its beak. The first button lowers the dedicated storage area for the Origin X1 hover bike, which is a unique feature to the 400i in this class of ship. CIG has stated that the bay is specifically for the X1 and not designed to fit vehicles from other manufacturers. As of 3.16.1, I was able to park a Nox in there with relative ease, but they could lock this down at some point in the future. The sealed bike storage can only be accessed from the outside of the ship, but its contents can be viewed from the forward airlock upon entering the ship. The second button lowers the front steps that are the primary entrance to the vessel. Going up the ramp, we find ourselves in a section of the ship that is a dedicated forward airlock room 
that keeps the rest of the ship safe when this section is depressurized. In this area, we find the standard UEE docking collar and controls, the gravity generator, the viewport to the X-1 storage bay, as well as weapon racks and suit lockers for the crew. While we've seen exposed gravity generators in larger ships like the Reclaimer, Starfare, and 890 Jump, it's fairly unique to see one on such a prominent display in a ship the size of the 400i. The weapon lockers can fit standard rifle-sized weapons as well as pistols, knives, and utility devices, but there does not appear to be storage for larger weapons like railguns as we would find in the armory of the Hercules A2, for example. Beside the weapons lockers, we find three suit storage lockers for the crew. The crew has a communal access of 1500k micro SCU of storage. Heading aft, we come to the component housing storage areas. These areas are actually climate controlled on the 400i, so be sure to dress accordingly when entering for any maintenance tasks. The port side area contains the three polar coolers as well as the avionics package. On the starboard side, we can see our size 3 guard shield generator. As we head to the rear cargo section, we can see the elevator that takes us from the technical deck up to the habitation area. There is also a ladder tucked away on the side that allows access between the two areas during emergencies. The rear cargo room is reasonable for a ship of this class. The 400i can hold a total of 42 SCU of cargo and fills the cargo elevator squarely when fully loaded. Although not explicitly advertised, I was able to fit a Tumbrel Cyclone RC inside with relative ease, so this would allow the 400i to explore with two vehicles instead of one if you're willing to give up the cargo space. The exterior walls of the room contain panels housing the jump drive as well as four escape pods for the ship. We also find the location of our three power plants behind three separate panels at various locations in the room. On the wall immediate beside the exit, there is an access panel that controls the locking and lighting in the room. There is also a dedicated button for the ramp control itself. Heading back to the service elevator, we make our way up to the habitation area. Directly across from the elevator, we find the only bathroom on the ship. It has stowaway facilities via the button panel on the right, as well as lighting and door controls. There is also a clothing storage area to keep everything dry while you use the rather large shower head above to clean off after a hard day's work. Heading out towards the stern, we come to the captain's quarters on the port side. Within, we find contemporary furnishing providing the captain with absolute comfort whether docked or millions of miles from civilization. There is a single bed for getting some rest or logging out, as well as several personal storage areas. There are two individual drawers that lock in the desk, and a third storage drawer below the bed. There is also a storage locker for the captain's wardrobe, as well as ornate decorations throughout. Across the hall, we find the slightly less luxurious crew quarters which house the two other members of the crew. There is a bed and clothing locker for each member as well as personal storage underneath the beds. Individual crew storage ensures each member's vital equipment is at hand in seconds. In the stern of the ship, we find the common relaxation and kitchen area. A viewport expands across the rear of the ship allowing the wonders of the stars to be seen. A quaint charcoal and black table seats four easily with its faux leather booth design. On the wall beside the sink, we have the specific lighting controls for this area. The countertop of the sink area is a beautiful grey marble finish inlaid with gold throughout its veins. To the bottom right of that, we find a dedicated climate controlled wine and spirits rack. At the very rear of this section is a hollow table, which currently displays the image of a star system, but in the future perhaps it can be used for other activities. Moving back towards the bow of the ship, we finally come to the bridge. The seating and design are reminiscent of the 600 series in a way. There are two seats for co-pilots and gunners allowing access to system monitoring as well as each of the remote turrets on the top and bottom of the ship containing two size 3 Panther repeaters each. The captain's chair in the middle provides a good view as well as access to the two size 4 hardpoints and missile systems we discussed earlier. The 400i ship design is growing on me a lot. Once we see exploration hit the game, I think it will be a great ship to go out and explore with a couple of friends in style. With its quick maneuvering and large shield, it's a great option for those wanting to explore safely and maintaining the ability to survive and leave the fight easier than other ships in its class. Add to that the ability to have a dedicated hoverbike and cargo at the same time, it's sure to be a winner in the hearts of many citizens.
If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to join the Discord to chat with the community live. As always, thanks for watching.